Hello and welcome to a special edition of the Racing Post Bloodstock Postcast. Uh, we're here in rural Wiltshire with Malcolm Bastard to um, discuss the Golden Horn two year olds that he's pre training. Um, Malcolm, if you could just give us a little brief overview of your kind of background in the industry. Obviously, you've worked for a, a fairly famous trainer in your younger years when you were a jump jockey. Um, well, ever since I was a small boy, I've always been um, in love with horses. Um, and then I was lucky enough to get a job with Fred Winter for a number of years when he had a lot of good horses there. Um, and I watched some very clever people, Brian Delaney, who was his head lad, and John Franken was the first jockey there. And obviously Mr Winter was a, a champion trainer eight times. He was yeah. uh, mar uh, absolutely marvellous to work for. Which kind of horses were there when you were there? Uh, Pendle, Bula, Lanzarotti, Crisp, The Dealer. Some, you know, very nice horses. Yeah. So, uh, and, and there were some moderate horses as well, but he knew the difference between the good ones and the, and the average ones. Right. And um, during your career in the title, how many win winners did you ride? Uh, about 120, something like that. Not okay. many. <laughs> it's more than many, I'm, I'm <laughs> sure. Um, and then towards the end of your riding career, you moved into selling breeze of horses. Just basically pin hooking, yeah. And, and I pin hooked for, just, just pin hooked alone, buying and selling for about 15 years. And... And then we started to take a odd horse to pre-train that we was asked to take, and um, the, this business has developed from there. Yeah. And so, how long have you been involved in the breezers and the pre-trainers? And... Uh, probably, probably 30 years, nearly 30 years doing the breezer horses, and probably pre-training for um, maybe 18, 18, 19 years, something mm. like that. Okay. And on the breezer side of things, how have things changed in the uh, 30 years you've been um, in the game? The the horses probably need to be more precocious now. Um, there, there's no uh, official timing, but uh, there, there's plenty of people that time, and uh, they use it as a guideline, not 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 as a not not as um, uh, a, a total way to buy a horse, but they do look at the time. So they they need to do it in a nice way, in a reasonable time. Mm. Whereas before you could have two horses and they'd come up and you'd have two nice quality horses and you probably did quite well with them. Mm. And um, we're here at your yard this morning. Um, you said you've got about 160 horses in at the moment and the majority of those would be horses in pre-training? Uh, pre-training and, and, and a good number of horses for the Hong Kong breeze-ups. Right, OK. Um, and could you give us a little sort of brief uh, explain on what the kind of pre-training and breaking process involves? Obviously horses would come to you from either owner breeders farms or from the sales you know the yearling sales having been unbroken yeah uh, we, we get a lot of owner breeder horses and generally they come in in october and november um and we take a time and we break them and we get them going and just generally what everyone else does with them you know we, we basically trot for two or three weeks and then we get them cantering mm -hmm. but we get them to a level where they're they're nice to pass on to people so that they can you know nice and easy to ride and they can get on with their training job mm -hmm. It's a sort of part of the process with a racehorse that's probably a little bit behind the scenes and people don't quite understand the ins and outs of the pre-training process, but how significant is this period in a young racehorse's life? Well, everything's important in their life from when they're foaled, well, from, from when the mares are carrying them. You know, every, every stage is very important and at any stage they could get spoilt. Um, but basically we like to, you know, be nice and kind to them, but be firm so that they... They know their job and, you know, they can go on and hopefully progress and turn out to be good. Mm. And um, you've obviously had quite a few good horses through your hands um, at the, in the early stages of their life. Could you give us a few of the names that have been here and you've pre-trained? Well, obviously we had Golden Horn, Cracksman, Rainbow View, Two Darn Hot. Um, a few that turned out good that we didn't think were very good. I won't mention their <laughs> names, but everybody likes to mention it to me. <laughs> a, a, lot, a lot of nice quality horses. Mm must make the job a little bit easier knowing you're working with such nice well-bred um it, it's yeah. nice that they go on and do well afterwards mm. you know? know how much satisfaction do you take personally from seeing these horses go on and succeed oh immense yeah. absolutely immense mm. you know it's it's what everybody's aiming for they're they're aiming for quality horses that um, you know can go to the nice meetings and, and and win the nice races okay and you mentioned golden horn there he's obviously particularly timely given that his first two year old's going to be hitting the track um this year what can you remember of him when he was around here? And what kind of time of year did he come to you? He, Any particular he, characteristics? That he, well, he, he, he was very straightforward. He, was, he came to us after the October sales. He was just a nice quality, solid horse that cantered away really well. Mm. 
obviously went on to be a phenomenal racehorse winning arc an arc a derby uh, an eclipse was there any indication of how good he would be when he was here with you I'd like to say I knew all of that, but I didn't. <laughs> he, he was just a very nice quality horse with a very good temperament that moved extremely well, mm. uh, and, and he ticked most of the boxes. Yeah. Um, and obviously you've got a good number of his two-year-olds here with you now. Um, are there any similarities you're seeing in his progeny as you saw in him? Oh, most certainly. You know, they're, they're, they've got good bone, very good confirmation. Um, they're sensible horses, good temperaments, but alert. Um, they, they appear to have a bit of pace, uh, the level that we're doing with them at the moment. They, you know, they've got a bit of pace and, and they'll relax after work and they'll eat. Uh, they're just nice quality horses. Mm -hmm. um, and at this stage of the year, how much have you done with the, uh, the Golden Horn to your well, they've, they've been cantering nicely, which they're just increasing a little bit now. I mean, he, he, was, he only ran once at two-year-old and he broke the track record at Nottingham. Um, you know, hopefully they're going to be nice back-end horses and yeah. extremely good three-year-olds next year. So you'd expect them to follow a similar sort of path to the one he trod? Uh, that's up to the trainers, but, you know, you'd like to see him have a, a number of nice winners at the back-end, yes. OK, very good. Right, well, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us, Malcolm, and thank you for showing us around your beautiful yard and showing us all these fantastic horses and all the best for the future. Thank you, it's a pleasure.